بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome my beautiful sisters to our weekly lesson where we learn verses from the Quran authentic sayings of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to learn how to live right. We're here to learn how to think properly, how to feel right. We are learning to regulate our emotions. We need to learn how to control this tongue. We don't speak randomly. We think before we speak because the word has an effect on others, on even myself. Whatever I say to myself, I believe it. My body will believe it. And that's what I will see. The results are going to be what I believe deep inside, the voice inside my head, my feelings. So we have to be careful of what we say when I am alone, when I am with people. I can hurt people with my tongue and I'm not allowed to do that. Also our action, our reaction, we have to learn how to control it as well. My behavior, I am a Muslim, I am responsible for my behavior. There is no excuse in disrespecting other people. Some people give themselves excuses. They say, oh, I am advising. No, there are conditions. There are certain way of advising and we have to follow these instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some people say, I am teaching, I am disciplining my kids, I am doing this, I am doing that. No excuses. No excuses are going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for disrespect. I have to respect everyone. I have to be a good listener. We do not argue. We speak, but we think before we speak, and we have to do everything in the right way. That is the test. When we say Allah is testing us, yes, Allah is testing us. He is testing. Am I going to choose halal or haram? He wants to see, to see if I choose right or wrong. He wants to see if I choose goodness or evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see, am I going to choose good thoughts or bad thoughts? Am I going to choose good feelings, positive feelings, or negative? Am I going to choose the good words or the evil words? What am I going to choose? How am I going to have my habits? What are the habits every day? My lifestyle, my likes and dislikes, what I eat, where I go, my friends, all the decisions that I make in this life, all my choices, that is the test. Allah is testing what I will choose every day. Allah is testing me. He is watching over me. The angels are writing. That's what they are writing. They are writing my own choices. So I have to be careful. We don't live randomly. We don't live in chaos. We plan. I have goals. I have clarity. Everything is clear. I know what I want. I know who I am. I know where I am heading. That is what we are learning in these lessons on a weekly basis. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا And this is my straight path. This is my perfect plan for you. This is the map I set for you. You follow my path. You follow the straight path. You follow the map. You, lo you follow my instructions. فَاتَّبِعُوا فَاتَّبِعُوا Follow it. Allah is ordering us. This is the path. Follow it. These are the rules. Follow them. These are the instructions. Do, don't. And you have to follow them. Because if you follow them, then you will be the winner. You will have success in this world and in the hereafter. 
ولا تتبع السبل do not go and follow other paths do not follow other um, instructions and other ways because if you do that فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ You will lose yourself. You will lose your path. You will be lost. You will be confused. You will be suffocating. You will be empty. You become materialistic. You become silly. You become superficial. That's not who you are. We are not materialistic people. We're not living this world to eat and drink and go out and have fun. That is not who we are. We have values. We live with values. I have values. I am honest. I am a trustworthy person. And I choose Islam. I choose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I choose Jannah. I choose the highest level of Jannah. I choose my prophet. I want to be with him. So in order to be with him, I have to follow his path. So that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to our prophet, Ul, say, say to whom? Say to people, say to the Muslims, say to human beings, say to us, this is for us, especially for the Muslims. Ul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah. Say to Muslims, if you love Allah, fattabi'uni. Follow me, follow my path, follow my instructions, follow my plan, which is uh, the, the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, the authentic sayings of his uh, of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we follow Quran and Sunnah, then Allah will love you in return. If I want Allah to love me, then I have to obey him. I have to follow his instructions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive my sins and my mistakes. So if I really, I, if I really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I have to obey him. If I really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I have to follow his instructions in all the circumstances. When I am sick, when I am healthy, when I am poor, when I am rich, when I feel good, when I feel bad, when I am up, when I am down, I am following the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in when I am alone and when I am with people. It is always between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So always focusing on what I want, focusing on what I'm doing here is the test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers and he say, amanu, and those who believe in him, those who believe in akhirah, they believe in Jannah, they believe in resurrection, they believe in the malaika, they believe in the books revealed by Allah, they believe in the messengers, they believe in destiny. Amanu, ashaddu hubban lillah. They love Allah the most. So the believers, they choose Allah. They choose the sunnah of the Prophet. They love Allah the most. Because, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ Some people, and he called them now nasi. He didn't say the believers. He said, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ Some people, مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا Some people, they choose um, they choose partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They choose objects. They choose people. They choose other than Allah. They love them as much as they love Allah. I cannot love someone as I love Allah. The same amount of love. No, because I, it, it will be mixed here. Should I obey Allah or obey this person? I can't love my husband and love Allah the same love. I will be, it will be mixed in my brain. Should I obey Allah or my husband? No, if I love Allah the most, I will obey Allah. And I will say to my husband, with all my love to you, with my respect to you, I can't do this because it is haram. 
in a nice way, in a nice way. We have to be wise. We don't attack. We're not loud. We don't say hurtful things. We don't lecture. We do not blame. We just say, I can't do this. I am so sorry, honey. My kids, I love my kids more than my, um, I love uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than my kids. Because if I love my kids more than Allah or the same amount of love, things will be mixed. Then I'm not going to take care of them properly. And I'm not going to discipline the way Allah ordered me. Then I will leave them and I will be always, uh, you know, spoiling them. And I will be only taking care of them with materialistic things. No, I love Allah the most. So I have to be a good role model and I have to live with balance in this world and show my kids what Islam is in a nice way. So I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than people in general. Because Allah says to me something, people around me are saying to me the opposite. I choose to obey Allah. That's why we have to choose the love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything else in this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in Quran, Allah knows the truthful. Allah knows if I really love him. Allah knows if I am following him with all the power I have. Am I trying? Am I really learning? Am I really asking questions to know what does Allah want? Not I'm following my desires. We do not follow our desires. We follow the instructions of Allah and his prophet. So Allah knows the truthful. Allah knows also who claim and act to be Muslims, but they are not really doing their best. Yes, yeah, some people say, I love Allah. I love the prophet, but they are doing the opposite of what Allah says. And they are doing the opposite of what the prophet والسلام, is saying to them. Is that love? That is not love. Loving Allah and loving the prophet والسلام, is following their instructions. Why do we follow the instructions of Allah and his prophet? Because it is always the good for me. Allah created me. He knows what I need emotionally. He, he knows what I need physically. He knows what I need um, in everything in my life. And he wants me to have a good life. My trust in Allah knowing that Allah wants me to be happy. Allah wants me to have a good life. So he told me, do not drink alcohol. Do not commit adultery. Do not have a boyfriend. Do not go mixed places. Do not eat pork. Do not eat animals that are not slaughtered Islamically. Do not take interest. Do not lie. Do not backbite. All the instructions that Allah gave me are for my benefit because Allah loves me. That's why it is not to make my life difficult or complicated. No, it is to make my life easier, to make my life better, to make my life healthy in all aspects, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Allah wants me to have the good life. What makes us make the decisions? How can I become strong in making my choices, in making my decisions. I have to always remember, first, I trust Allah. Whoever believes in Allah truly, Allah will guide his heart. Allah will guide my heart. Allah will teach me whatever I need. Allah will guide me to the right path for me in this world and in the hereafter. Wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim. Allah knows everything. Allah knows everything more than me. I know nothing about myself. I know nothing about relationships. I know nothing about finance. I know nothing about food. I know nothing about sleep. I know nothing about people around me. Allah knows. And he's telling me, just obey me. Just do what I'm saying to you. 
and you will be fine and everybody around you will be safe when they are with you and then again Allah says wa Allah wa Rasul that's in surah At-Taghabun obey Allah and obey the prophet that's where you will find the guidance that's where you will find safety and security how can I make myself stronger in making the decisions? Because I am distracted. I love fashion. I love makeup. I love to put the perfume when I go out. I love to go to mixed places. I love to go to uh, gatherings where women are half naked. I love to go to the restaurants where they serve alcohol. I love to go to the beach and there are a lot of naked women there. I love listening to music day and night. I know music plays with my mind. I know that it is playing with my emotions. But I still love to watch the movies and romantic movies. I know it is affecting me negatively. But how can I change? How can I make the right choices? How can I be strong? I know I need to practice. But to practice, I need the strong will. Where do I get the strong will? By thinking right, my beautiful sisters. When we remember that I'm going to die any day, I'm going to die any second. That is the fact that we shouldn't forget. Yes, all the fun, I think it is fun. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go home. Home is akhira. We're not living here forever. If I want to make any decisions, I have to remember my grave. I have to remember that I'm going to stand up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, One day, everybody will get out of their graves. All people in the graves are going to be resurrected. I know that whatever I hide in my heart is going to come to the public. My intention is written. Everything, my thoughts, my feelings, my plans, my goals, what I want, likes and dislikes, the imagination. What am I imagining? What am I focusing on every day? It's written by the angels or lie. And it's going to be written on a book. And the book is going to be in my hands. I'm not going to be able to hide it from people. I'm not going to be able to say, you know what? Let me put it under my hijab. No one will see. You're not going to have a safe where you can put it inside and lock. No secrets in the day of judgment. In the day of judgment, there will be no secrets. Now I have secrets. I can, I can hide my intention. I can lie to you. I can hide in my bedroom. I can hide in my bathroom. I can hide from people. But in the day of judgment, it is all in public. This is my book. It's going to be in front of me. Everyone can come and look who I am in reality and what I want. Yes, everything will come to the surface. إِنَّ رَبَّهُمْ بِهِمْ يَوْمَ الْخَبِيرِ Allah is Al-Khabir. Allah knows he has experience. He knows everything about me. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Who am I? What am I doing in this world? What am I dreaming of? We daydream every day. What are you daydreaming about? What do you want? What are you thinking of every day? That's all. Allah is Al-Khabir. Allah knows all these things about me. And in the day of judgment, everybody else will know as well. It's going to be in public. So why waiting until that scandal happens? Why can't I think right now, really seriously, what do I want in this world? I want to be happy. What is happiness? What is happiness? Is happiness by having fun? Is happiness by being rich? Is happiness by, by being 
prettier than others? Is happiness by having things more than other people? Is happy uh, happiness is by showing off in front of people? I want them to point at me and say, wow, look, she has this, she has that, she traveled, she is. Is that happiness? Is that what's going to make me happy? Unfortunately, not. Because if it was happiness, then Allah would make us all rich. Allah would make us all pretty. Allah would give us all whatever we want. But it is not always what I want that is beneficial for me. We need to sit down, pause, reflect. Really, what do I want in this world? What am I thinking of? What am I after in this world? What's my plan? The plan, I need to feel good. That's happiness. Happiness is to feel good deep inside my heart. Of course, in the day of judgment, everything that I want, everything that I'm thinking about, everything is going to appear to everyone and it's going to be in public. So now I have to be aware. So I have to make new plans and I have to make new goals. My goal is to feel good. My goal is to feel good about myself, about other people around me. I have to purify myself. I have to purify my heart. No grudges, no hatred, no envy. I shouldn't be jealous of anybody. That's my goal. My goal is to purify myself deep in my heart. Because if I have grudges, if I have all these um, things that I'm hiding deep in my heart, it will come in the day of judgment and it will appear on my face. My face will show it all. Some people will have light in the day of judgment. It will reflect the light in their hearts. A pure heart will come in the day of judgment with light. But some people will have dust. They will be pale. Yes. No makeup in the day of judgment. No concealer. I can't have anything to hide the pale face. I'm not going to be able to remove any of that dust in the day of judgment. I won't be able to go and do facial. I'm not going to be able to go to the salon and say to them, fix my face. No, that is the real heart will appear on the face. If you are shy from people, you say, I don't want to see, I do not, I feel shy to show people my real face. So I have to hide it. Are you able to show the real emotions, the emptiness? Are you able to show all these grudges on your face in the day of judgment? It's going to appear. It will come to the surface. No one will help me to hide. No one can hide their faces. Yes. So I choose. I choose to purify my heart. I choose to feel good deep inside my heart. And I have to feel good towards everybody around me. Because I always think about Akhirah. I always think about the moment I'm going to stand up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is my strength as a believer. This is my strength. which will, 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 will give me the strength to change my habits. Yes, I can change my habits and I can, inshallah, change my actions and my behavior, my thoughts, my feelings, my words. Because of that minute, I'm going to stand up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, Ibn al-Qayyim says beautiful words. He always have beautiful words. He said, the greatest, the biggest punishment for a human being in this world for choosing to be materialistic, for choosing to be a show of empty, uh, uh, superficial person, to be away from Allah, not to worship Allah properly, 
choosing evil over uh, uh, goodness. The greatest, the biggest punishment is when this heart is becoming very hard and, and, and feeling the emptiness inside. That's the biggest punishment. Yes, the punishment is not, oh, the person will become, it's not always the person will be sick or poor or whatever. No, it's sometimes it is by the feelings. My feelings inside, I'm struggling. I'm struggling deep inside my mind and in my heart. I have to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to fix it. So I need to go back to Allah. I have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fix all these feelings. A man, a companion actually, came to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, my heart is hard. It's like a rock. I'm not feeling good, Ya Rasulullah, in my heart. I'm not feeling contentment. I don't feel like satisfied. There's something wrong in my heart. So the Prophet والسلام, said to him, if you want your heart to become soft, if you want to soften your heart, then go to the orphan and wipe on his head. Be merciful to an orphan. Sponsor an orphan. الْمِسْكِينَ Feed a hungry person. Feed the hungry per people. You feel down, you feel bad, you don't go and, 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 and have fun. You don't go to a gathering to dance and, uh, okay, let me go shopping. It's not going to fix your feelings. You're not feeling good deep inside. Fix it by doing goodness. Be a good, righteous person. Help others. Help others. Go and do goodness. Some people, when they have, like, when their hearts are not soft, they become grumpy. They become grumpy and they, they become angry. Why are you angry? Why are you grumpy? Smile. Smile. It's so easy. Just smile. You know, I can't smile. Some people, smiling is like, you know, carrying a mountain. Why can't you smile? Subhanallah. Like Jarir bin Abdullah said, ما رآني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا تبسم في وجهي. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام never saw me without smiling in my face. Why can't we just feel good towards each other? Why can't we smile to each other? Some people smile to strangers, but they cannot smile to their own children, to their own sisters, to their parents, to their own husband. When they are with the beloved ones, they are always angry and grumpy. Why? Why are we acting like that? Oh, because of the problems in this world, because of the news, because, 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 because of what? Why are you carrying earth on your shoulders and walking? Put it down. Just put it down and focus. I cannot change the world. I cannot change the world, but I can change myself. Sitting here complaining, uh, complaining about people, complaining about the world, complaining about the weather, complaining about everything is not going to fix the problem. I have to fix myself. I have to change my habits. I have to change the way I see things. You know, take it easy. Do not overthink. Why overthinking when I have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah will not ask me about everything in this life. Allah will ask me about myself. So that's what I have to be focusing on, changing myself. Take things easy. Relax, relax, calm down and take things easy. Anas bin Malik said, we were walking, me and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and a man came, you know, the Arabians who lived in the desert where they are very 
difficult people, very harsh people. Some of them are harsh more than others. So Al-Arabi, Al-Arabi is a person who lived in the desert and they are usually like tough. So he said an Arabi came running towards us and he comes to the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam in a hurry and he grabs him from his, he was wearing a coat, he was wearing something and he grabs him from his neck. He said, I looked at the neck of the Prophet and I saw his skin. I saw that there was like, it left a mark on his neck because the man was very tough he grabbed him tough with tough hands and and it left a mark it was painful it was bad he said it left a mark on the neck of the prophet and the man said ya muhammad he didn't even say ya rasulallah peace be upon you no beginning, no introduction. He says, Ya Muhammad, with his bare name. Murli min andak. Give me money from the money Allah gave you. <laughs> Is this how you ask? Is this how we speak? Is this how we act? Now look at the behavior of the Prophet What did the Prophet? He runs to him. He yells, Ya Muhammad. And he orders him, give me from the money Allah gave you. And he grabs him from the neck. The Prophet smiled. He smiled to him. Our merciful Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And he, he said to the Sahaba, give him money. Give him what he is asking for. Voila, end of discussion. Did he lecture him? Did he say to him, I'm not going to give you because you are talking to me like that. You know what? Come with me, you're going to be punished. He didn't do any of that. He just looked at him. He's a stranger. He's a stranger. He comes to him. So if my son talks to me, calls me my bare name and tells me, give me money, woman. <laughs> I will say to him, excuse me. Ask me nicely. I will, I will say to him, Ask me nicely, mama. I will discipline my son. I'm not going to allow my son to speak to me like that. I will teach him, but not by putting him down. Not by yelling at him. Not by um, lecturing him. Not by blaming and criticizing. And you do that. I'm not going to talk a lot. I will just say, you need to ask me nicely. Lower your voice. I'm listening. And then he will ask. Thank you for asking me nicely. What do you want? That's it. You know, when we overreact, when we get angry, and then we blame the whole world for our anger. We blame the whole world. We blame animals. We, we blame the moon and the sun for our anger. No, that is not right. I am responsible of my behavior in this world. Being a Muslim means being a respectful person. Yes, Islam is not just pray and fast and yalla, lecture people and blame them and put them down and interrupt to them. It's not like that. No, Islam teaches us to be peaceful. We are peaceful people. So you don't get triggered by ignorant people. Yes, there are a lot of disrespectful people around us. There are rude people. There are ignorant people. Is that an excuse to be triggered and yell and interrupt and argue and lecture and judge? No, no excuse. This person is rude. I am not rude. 
So when they talk to me like that, I don't talk to them like that. And they will not trigger me. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to be upset because I know who I am. I don't know who they are. And I don't care because everyone chooses who they are. So we have to learn not to be triggered by the surroundings. Don't say she triggered me. He triggered me. I have a problem here. I have anger issues. I get triggered. We don't get triggered by anything. We sit down. We think, what can I do in this situation? What should I say? How should I react? Give yourself a few seconds, pause, think, reflect, and do the right thing. In some cases, you can say to them, let me think, and we will talk about it. I don't have to give an answer straight away. In some cases, okay, let me just take some time thinking about it. And then you deal with the problem, whatever it is. But we Muslims, we don't get angry and do all these things. No. Our Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, if we want to obey Allah, if we want to obey the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, our Prophet said, Laysa shadidu bisura. A strong person is not the person who beats people down. A strong person is not the loud person who swears and hits and, 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 and is putting others down. No. The strong person is the person who controls their anger. I am strong when I control my thoughts, when I control my feelings, I control my tongue, I control my reaction, I control my behavior. Some people are toxic. Keep away from them. Not have clashes with them. Keep away from them. Speak less with them. Toxic people, the more you speak, the more you get angry. So the solution is less talking. Less talking when you are around negative people. And don't share everything. Do not speak about your hopes, your dreams, your goals, your beliefs, what you want. Less talking, less sharing, less drama. Speaking, the more you speak, the more drama. Less talking, less reacting, less drama. Keep away from toxic people. Keep away from negative people. You can see them. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Good. And then go your way. Don't sit down and share and, and then you go home and then you get angry and you say, oh, she said she is blah, 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 blah. Why are you meeting the toxic people all the time? Why are you always with the negative people? And then you are blaming every everything and you become angry and you become, keep away from them, keep peace. Yes, you are responsible of your own contentment in your heart. You are responsible of keeping the peace inside your heart. You want to have peace? Less talking. Hold yourself. Control your emotions. Do not overreact. Calm down. Sit down. Pose. Pose. Remember Allah. Remembering Allah a lot will bring ease to your heart. You feel like your emotions are all over the place? Sit down. Don't allow your thoughts to take you everywhere. Sit down. Focus. It's now. Do not allow your brain to take you to the past. Just take with you from the past lessons. But don't leave. Don't get stuck in the past. Khalas, it's gone. I am today. Don't go to the future. We don't know what's the future. I plan. I make goals. I'll do what I, whatever I can do daily basis, live every day, but don't live in the future. No, we live today. How can I control my emotions? How can I regulate my emotions? If my emotions, if my thoughts, if my brain takes me to the past or to the future, when I start overthinking, panicking, uh, worrying, sit down and remember Allah.
Say astaghfirullah al-azim al-lazhi la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum wa atubu ilayhi ten times. Say Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad ten times. Say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliyy al-azim ten times. Say la ilaha illa ant subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin ten times. Say subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanallahi al-azim. Ten times. Remember Allah over and over and over and let your brain take you to the day of judgment. If I stand up in front of Allah, what do I want to be in the day of judgment? What do I want to be um, for how long with whom? I want to go to Jannah. So sit down and make dua. Ya Rabb, ask Allah to go to the highest level of Jannah, my Lord. Ya Rabb, I want to be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't want to be judged. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to be uh, sitting there for years and years. I just want to be for a few minutes. That's what you're going to be focusing on. If you want to regulate your emotions, you want to have peace, sit down and remember Allah and make dua. While you are remembering Allah, you are focusing on what do I want? I want to have peace in my heart. I don't want to have any grudges. I don't want to be jealous. I do not want to argue with anyone. I do not want to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't want to break anybody's heart. I want to have peace in my life. So that, inshallah, I go to the land of peace eventually in Jannah. Jannah is the land of peace. And then the angels will open the gates for me and they will say, Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Sabr, I need sabr. To obey Allah, to obey the Prophet, I need to be peaceful. I need sabr. Yes, that's my strength. Sabr. I need to sit down, reflect, and do the right things. Not to overreact. Not to hurt people. Not to say random things. And then I say, I am a victim. We're not always the victim. The victim mindset is over. I'm not the victim anymore. I have to take responsibility of my behavior, of my words, my thoughts, my feelings, my reaction, my, my everything. Yes, I'm going to take the responsibility from now on. No more victim and, and sitting there and feeling lost. No, I can't be lost forever. I have to search for the way. I have to go back to the straight path. Yes, I need to do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ Whoever wants to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happily, satisfied فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Let him do good deeds وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Do not do anything for other than Allah don't have partners with Allah. Do not love anybody more than Allah because if you love someone more than Allah, you will obey them more than Allah. I'm not going to feel shy. I'm not going to feel embarrassed. If someone says to me, do something haram, I will say, I'm so sorry. I don't do this. Please accept my apology. That's it. I'm not going to feel embarrassed to say that I am a Muslim and I don't do this. Yeah, I don't take interest. I do not take loans from the bank. I don't buy something monthly. If there is a fine, you don't pay on time, there will be fine. That's interest. I don't do that. People want to mock me. People want to say something. I don't care. I know what I want because I can see myself in the day of judgment. Yes, when I am, I'm using my imagination. One day I'm going to be in the day of judgment. One day I'm going to be in Jannah. I'll forget all this. This is not fun. This is not happiness. Fun, happiness is when it is in Jannah, inshallah. That is the real happiness in this world is just to know Allah, to obey Allah, to obey the Prophet والسلام, to have peace in my heart. That is the happiness in this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ma ala al -ardi. 
He created everything on earth. Zinatan laha. Zinatan laha. Allah made everything with like it is like a dormant. Yes, everything around us is distracting us. Everything is, we love everything. We're distracted by money, uh, fashion, clothing, going, coming, restaurants, houses, cars, uh, all these, subhanAllah, social media, everything is distracting. Everything is fun. Everything is just amusement. That is what's on earth. Why? لنبلوهم. To test us, to test our choices. What do you want to be? A materialistic one? No, I don't want to be materialistic. I am not a superficial person. No, I am a person full of Iman. I know what I want. I know who I am. Yes, I want Jannah. I do not want hell. In the day of judgment, I don't want to be under the sun. I want to be under the shade of the throne of Allah. I choose to trust Allah. I don't trust, trust people. People will say to me, buy a house for the future. Buy a car for the, I don't know, do this, do that. I'm not going to listen to anybody. I trust only Allah. Allah loves me. Allah wants me to have the good life. So I will do whatever he say. Because Allah says, after he said that everything on earth is a dormant, we get distracted by it. It is very nice to us. Everything on earth, when we wake up in the day of judgment, there will be no shopping centers. On earth, there will be nothing. There will be no streets. There will be no cars. There will be no houses. There will be no shops, no banks. There will be no cards, bank cards, there will be no shoes, there will be no fashion, there will be no makeup, there will be no holes for uh, weddings and all these things and nothing. Earth will be only full of sand, sand only on this earth. When we wake up, all these beautiful things, all the the beaches, the restaurants are all gone. I will be alone with my deeds. I will be alone with my decisions. And I'm going to die any second. Any minute I'm going to leave. Am I going to just sit down being distracted in this world, knowing that when I die, it's over? When I'm resurrected, I will come back with no materialistic things. I'm going to be here with my decisions and my choices. So let me focus on my choices then. I'll choose halal over haram. I choose right over wrong. I choose goodness over evil. That's what I do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to think right. Go back to him sincerely today before tomorrow. Don't go with the flow. Don't get distracted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts tawbah now before we die. He forgives us. He will forgive us for all what we did. All we have to do is to go back to him with repentance. He knows what you're doing. Allah knows what you're thinking about. Allah knows what you're using your imagination. What are you imagining every day? He knows. Allah, Allah can see you. Allah knows what you're thinking. Allah knows how you feel. Allah knows all the grudges. Allah knows all the jealousy. Allah knows if you are thinking in a materialistic way. Allah knows. Do you want Allah to look at you and you are empty like that? Why? Why are you doing this to yourself? Let's wake up. Let's wake up and live this world, this life right and go to the highest level of Jannah and do it in the right way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to go back to him. Allah wants us to choose righteousness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do the right thing.
because he knows us. He knows us. He knows what we need, Wallahi. He says, Inna al-insana khuliqa halu'a. The human being is created halu'a. What is halu'a? The human being overreacts. They exaggerate in their reaction. Yes, this is the human being. The human being, they exaggerate and they um, they they over like oh, they just do all these uh, things inside. And either if something wrong happens, if something bad happens, they become jazua, the human being. Okay. And he said, in al insana, the human being. So he's talking about the human being, not the believer. Yeah. The human being is halua. They exaggerate in their reaction, they overreact. And if something happens uh, to them, if something bad happens to them, they become jazua. A jazua is the person who overthinks. So they worry, they are afraid, they are scared. They are down, they feel sad, they feel angry. That's jazwa. They panic. They panic. Some people panic, they become angry. Some people, when they panic, they become depressed. Some people, when they panic, they, they worry and they overthink. That's when they panic. When something doesn't go their way, something wrong happens. وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعَ and the man, the human being, when they have something good, they keep it to themselves. They are selfish. They don't share. They don't give. They just keep, they keep piling, saving money, piling things. They want more and more dunya things. That's the human being. That's in al insana. That's the person in general, human beings. But illa except. There is certain people on earth who are not halua. They don't become jazua if something wrong happens, and they are not manua if they have good things happening to them. Who are they? Illa al musallin. Except the believers who pray. When they pray, they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when I pray, I don't pray Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and everything, ya Allah, quickly and, and praying just, uh, you know, the, the fast prayer. No. They pray with khushu'ah. They pray with khushu'ah. They know what they are doing. They know that when they pray, they are, um, uh, they are doing it in the right way. I don't know why my video... Um, it just, um, okay, it freezed. I have no idea why, but you can hear me. You can still hear me, my sisters? Yes, yes, yes. we can. Excellent, yes. yes we can. I'm gonna continue talking. It's downloading something, yeah. no, no problem. So, except al musallin So, because al musallin when they are remembering Allah, they are reciting Quran. They are they're asking Allah for the good ending. They ask Allah to accept them. They ask Allah for sincerity. When they pray, they say, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. They ask Allah to guide them to the straight path in every rak'ah. They are praising Allah in ruku'ah, in sujood. So that's why Al Musalleen, they remember Allah. And Allah says, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatuma'innu al qulub. In remembering Allah with khushu' and they pray uh, with tuma'nina, they are they are relaxed physically and they know what they're saying, then they don't panic. They do not overreact. They don't get angry. They don't worry too much because I will do what I have to do, but I will rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Allah through, I will keep making dua, 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 dua every day. And al musallin those who remember Allah, they always choose sabr. Fasbir. 
فاصبر صبرا جميلا do صبر but a good patience yes choose to be patient yes i choose to be patient innahum yarawnahu ba'ida they think that the day of judgment is far away they think death is far away wa narahu qariba allah says but it is coming very soon to allah time is passing quickly well actually time is passing quickly right now time is faster and faster it's faster than before and this is from the signs of the day of judgment so now by seeing that allah knows that the day of judgment is coming soon death is coming soon we have to also be aware of that reality but when i'm gonna worry when i'm gonna panic when i'm gonna be scared of death it is balance it is balance that we have to have so i know that i'm gonna die i'm not gonna be indulged in dunya i'm not gonna be a materialistic superficial person i will take from this world what i need i will enjoy eating i will enjoy my friends i will enjoy the company of my husband my kids my family toxic people i will keep away from them i don't have time to react and lecture people and complain about them i will sit down i will make dua i will ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me all the strength that i need I will ask Allah to change the circumstances. I will ask Allah to guide me to what is better for me in this world and in the hereafter. So this is who we are. This is what we do. And we live in, in, in this world, but we also live for the hereafter. When I do this, when I have balance in my life, then and only then I will feel contentment and the sweetness of faith the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam told us about the qata'am al-iman he tastes or she tastes the sweetness of iman faith man radiya billahi rabba whoever accepts and is pleased for allah to be his lord wa bil islam dina and islam to be his way of life Deen is not just religion, what I believe. It is how I live. It is my habits. It is uh, my, my way of life. I choose Islam. I choose Quran. And I choose the authentic sayings of my Prophet والسلام, to be my plan. It is my guidance. It is my path. It is the way I live. So I want to be pleased in this world and in the hereafter. I need to surrender to Allah. And I need to think wisely. I take from dunya what I need, but I'm not a slave for dunya. I live for akhirah. I choose right. I think before I make any decisions. I, I think before I make any choices because I want to choose wisely and I want to do it in the right way. I am not deep in my heart. I am not attached to anybody in this world. I am not attached to dunya. I'm not attached to anything in this world. I'm not attached even to a certain time in my life or a place. My heart is attached only to Allah. I remember Allah wherever I am. I obey Allah wherever I am. My heart is giving me signs. I feel down. I feel empty. I feel sad. I know that my heart is saying to me, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe I'm not remembering Allah enough. Maybe I'm not making dua enough. Maybe I am making the wrong choices in my life. Then I have to reset my goals and my priorities to feel good. This is Islam. And this is our Lord. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the merciful. Allah wants us to have a good life. He doesn't want us to struggle. He doesn't want us to be lonely. He doesn't want us to be empty. Allah doesn't want us to struggle in this world. He doesn't want us to be miserable. Allah wants us to have the good life in this life 
and in the hereafter. So we choose to respect each other. We choose to love goodness for ourselves and for others. And we choose, inshallah, happiness in this world and in the hereafter. And it is only in surrendering to Allah. Let's choose wisely, my beautiful sisters. Let's start a new beginning with Allah. Let's not get tired. If we are exhausted, if we are mentally and physically drained, means we are doing something wrong. Let's go back to the path of Allah. Sins are just a weight. You are carrying this weight wherever you go. You want to put this weight aside. You want to feel lighter. You want to feel better. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep away from haram. Less talking, less reacting, more fixing for myself, more fixing for my habits. I'm going to change myself. I'm not going to change the world. I'm not going to change people around me. No, I have to change myself. The last hadith, the Prophet والسلام, said, Inna al -mu'mina, the believer, la he, will, he will have the level of um, asa'im, the fasting in the day of judgment, uh, the fasting in the daytime, al qa'im who prays qiyamul layl with his good manners. If you have good manners, the angel on the right will write for you that you are fasting in the day of judgment, even if you're not fasting, the extra fasting, nafila. He will write for you qiyamul layl, even though you are asleep. If you pray the five prayers, the obligated prayers, but you are having or you're watching your tongue, you're watching your behavior, inshallah, you will have the reward of qiyamul layl, and which is the Hajjud people call it, and you will have the reward of fasting the daytime. So let's watch our behavior. Let's choose not to panic. Let's choose not to overreact to anything. Let's calm down. Let's take it easy. Put the earth from your shoulders. Put it away from you. Feel lighter. Remove the grudges. Cleanse your heart. Remove jealousy. If it is difficult, ask Allah to help you. Say, Ya Rabb, my Lord, purify me from anger. Purify me from jealousy. Purify my heart from the grudges. Purify my heart from envy. Purify my heart from whatever you have. Ask Allah to help you to purify your mind. Heal your heart. Ask Allah to heal your mind and remember him day and night. Do not focus on dunya. Do not focus on people. Nothing will help you except focusing on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his mercy and jannah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take us all together to the highest level of jannah without judgment, without entering hellfire, not even one second to be with our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to drink water from al kawthar from his hands and never get thirsty again, to move on the bridge over Jahannam like wind without falling down, and not to give one hasana to anybody in the day of judgment because we're not going to gossip, we're not going to lie, we're not going to backbite, we're not going to curse, we're not going to swear, we're not going to say anything wrong to anybody, we're not going to give our hasana to anybody. Keep your hasana for yourself. And we will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us certainty and sincerity to accept all our deeds, to do it only for the sake of him. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Jazakumullahu khayran, my beautiful sisters. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.